the metaverse is dead. And it only took three years and bajillions of dollars. I think the Facebook vision of the metaverse is, it's so stupid it makes me sad. <laughs> um, it, it, it accomplishes nothing. <laughs> Roblox are deciding to finally remove the metaverse label. This means we won't be seeing any more of this metaverse rubbish. I hope that this change can lead to a better Roblox now that they aren't pushing the metaverse thing anymore. Manchester City Football Club is creating the world's first metaverse football stadium with a virtual reality team at Sony. With no limit on how many people can fit in the virtual stadium, in theory there's no cap on the amount of people who could attend a match. When it comes to the metaverse, it may become a digital operating system that allows the creation of interoperable digital worlds that both extend and mirror the world as we know it today. Welcome to the Money Panda, hosted by Elvis Kolawale. In the last episode of The Money Panda, my guest educated me on all the action going on in the industrial and enterprise metaverse scene. This time, I decided to do a deep dive into what was going on in the massively popular consumer side, which is the part that most people get to see as THE metaverse. On this episode, I invited Eduardo Mazzetto, who is the founder of Meta Theory, to talk about building in the rapidly emerging metaverses. Eduardo has worked on more than 60 different spaces in various virtual worlds, and he offered unique insights into what companies are looking to do in giant consumer metaverses such as the Sandbox and Spatial. So let's get into it, shall we? Hello everyone, my name is Elvis Kolaole, and this is another great episode of The Money Panda. Today, I have Eduardo Mazzetto. I hope I pronounced that well. I always try to come up with my best Italian accent. You did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Eduardo is a founder of Meta Theory, a studio that onboards Web3 brands into the metaverse. And of course, as always, every episode, I tend to bring players in the space who are very passionate about um, the, the entirety of the Web3 ecosystem and everything that encompasses it. And I think Eduardo does a great job of trying to bring in um, web, th web three or web two brands into the into the metaverse and you know um and and you know beginning their journey and of course um bringing their user base into the web three ecosystem something which is a very very important job but then i wouldn't want you to take my word for it i would want you to listen to eduardo himself so eduardo why don't you tell us a little bit about meta theory what it does and um you know your role in that whole operation Great. Yeah, thank you. First of all, thank you, Alice, for, for letting me in. Uh, it's a great honor. So uh, I, I began the journey with Meta Theory uh, three years ago. We started uh, building for Sandbox. For who doesn't know, Sandbox is an open platform metaverse uh, where you can build, uh, own, and sell NFTs. And you can do a lot of stuff. Um, and we, we we basically started there. We were doing our first steps. We got to know the team and step by step the community. You know, three years ago there was not that much hype. So and, and NFTs and also digital lands uh, were not that kind of like uh, in in the middle of a bull market. So everything was kind of quiet. We got the time to learn. We got the time to uh, know each other, and uh, we started developing there. Uh, we 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 had fun, and then you know the funds turned into kind of like a work. Because we, we we started having some people asking us to do some experiences, some games, and and then we finally started working uh, working with Sandbox doing contests. Uh, two years ago, we then funded Meta Theory Studio with my partner Saverio, um, and day by day we've grown the team. Now we are close to sixty experiences, and by experiences I mean three D. Uh, immersive uh, metaverse experiences. That's beautiful. Uh, we've worked with, yeah, and you know the cool thing that I always say is that we had the chance to uh, work with a lot of brands, a lot of different brands, because in the metaverse we can find a lot of like different, um, a, a lot of variety with beauty brands, uh, football clubs, you know, just NFT projects, you know, whatever. And you know, as I said, now we. Um, are close to 60 experience delivered, uh, two years of, of experience, and now we're expanding also to other metaverse with the wonderful team that we have. Lovely. So what, what other metaverse are you expanding to? So as I said, we started with Sandbox. Uh, okay. You know, this central line was big at the time as well. But yeah. we, we didn't like, you know, the visuals and also the we got in touch first with the community with Sandbox. 
And so we started there. Uh, then we got to know Spatial. Uh, we fell in love with Spatial. It's, it's kind of like a little bit more difficult to build. Uh, it takes a little bit more time because it's more complex. It's, 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 it's raw. You know, in Spatial, you use a software, which is Unity, which is basically the game engine itself. Mm-hmm. Whether in on Sandbox, you use Game Maker, which is like a, a, like a Unity based. So it's kind of mm-hmm. like simpler with only visual elements. So Spatial, and then we're looking at Mona, uh, Fortnite as well. You know, there are a lot of metaverses out there, and I think we're going to see a lot more next year as well. Lovely, lovely. I love that work you're doing right now, you know. And of course, um, I, I will say um, it's it's been a wild, wild ride. Like you said, you know, that we had on football clubs, NFT projects, celebrities, you know, like everyone else that you, you, you probably wouldn't expect, you know, rappers, all that, like, in, in the metaverse and you know it was a fun ride i think from around 2020 um towards now but then like you said the the bull market like came to a close and sorry that was pre the bull market and then the bull market came of course i'm very sure you had a lot of business but then now the bull market is gone there is like a lot of macroeconomic uncertainty and you know we we have a situation where a lot of the the people, lots of the prominent people, lots of the prominent projects, lots of the prominent assets that were based in the metaverse are very, very far from their all-time highs. Some of them have depreciated so badly that, you know, lots of yeah. figures have pretty much absconded the metaverse. So that brings me to something really important um, because I, as I understand that you're still building even right now when, you know, some people will say that the metaverse is dead. So... I want to know why are me- companies really still building in the metaverse? Like in your opinion, I'm very sure some of these companies tell you, you know, their rationale for still going ahead to build even at this point in time. So why exactly are they still building? So first of all, like the metaverse is like, I think it's like a buzzword because no technology is set and it's just evolving. And I think it's not even like born. So um I don't think calling something that before before is even born is it's true to do. Um, so uh, compared to the modern market, as we, we were saying also last time, uh, we have more clients. And that's so funny because we've seen more traction than before. I think that the smart guys, the smart companies are coming now and it, and it came to us and for the past six months because they feel like if they build now, because they see the vision, they're going to be the first to have some kind of like um, good, um, good fundamentals coming into the boom market eventually next year or the year mm-hmm. after. So, as I said, we have, have more clients than in the boom market. And the clients that we have now are truly looking to build. We had a lot of people trying to speculate, you know, NFT projects just want to throw the word metaverse to just attract more people, but then build something that is pure speculative. Now we have uh, CMO of agencies, CMO of companies that are looking at the metaverse in different ways that it makes me really, really happy because they feel the value that is behind, you know, compared to all the people that came to us, for example, last year or two years ago. Hmm. So, I mean... Are you at liberty to tell us some of the ways that these companies are looking at the metaverse, like the kinds of value that they're seeing? Yeah, so um, let's let's take the easier one uh, because we've spoken with a lot of like CMOs primarily and um, partnership managers for the last two years and a half, more or less. So the first idea is brand awareness. Uh, you know, you get to a platform where, uh, let's say, Roblox that has. Uh, millions and millions of users monthly. So you're just going to want to grab their attention and make brand awareness, you know, as you do in marketing. But then if you go deeper and if you go into inside of what's like having like an immersive experience, you start pitching out an experience in the metaverse as a part of a bigger marketing plan. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying by that is that we do, we have seen, uh, we do hear people that see the metaverse as an alternative to ads or a complementary tool for ads. Mm. Uh, for example, like nowadays, um, pla- um, like companies fed thousands and hundreds of thousands of people of dollars in, in every month, you know, for 
Facebook ads, Google ads, um, and you can grab the attention of users, which is you know very very little because it's just a fractional time. You you know you've been to TikTok, you've seen that you know the amount of stuff there is out there. It's it's kind of like even difficult to to focus on something you know nowadays. The attention is is, is you know it's it's like thin air, and so they do see the metaverse as a very very good marketing tool that they're experimenting with now because you can grab the attention of users for a much much longer uh, time frame and then it's easier to first of all get brand awareness the make activations because you can then eventually airdrop an nft to somebody and then if the nft gets value the person is kind of like um linked to the nft because it's now oh i've been to the human she experience Oh, so cool. I've been with my friends. I spent 20, 30 minutes, you know, which is a lot of time if you compare it to nowadays ads. And and then I get an NFT, then I can exchange for, for value or just trade it. So you, you keep the relationship with the brand. You keep the retail relationship with the brand much, much longer. You know, nowadays ads can take like five to 10 seconds interactions. Now you can get 20, 30 minutes. And if you think that nowadays teenagers were born with with video games, and if we start, if we are able to kind of like get um, a more objective approach on video game and immersive experiences, mm -hmm. we can really get way way, way more traction with those compared mm -hmm. to just you know a two D screen with something on it. Hmm, that's interesting, and that's and that's really interesting to me as a marketing guy myself. Um, because I imagine you want to try and increase the lifetime value of a customer, and you also want to increase the um, the length of time that like a person is able to interact with a brand in any way. And you know, per perhaps these brands really see metaverse as that that kind of solution. I really get that. Right, I absolutely get that. You know, um, you know, just just like you said, because of the fact that you know people are are. Um, or used to video game environments and for me someone like me who is actually a millennial <laughs> i don't know if you can tell <laughs> like i used to find it a little strange um you know the fact that there were entire generations of people who were already used to full immersive experiences so it wasn't exactly unnatural for them to find themselves in you know to spend 30 minutes an hour shit like maybe lots of hours a day in an entire immersive experience that was probably curated by some brand and for that brand it's probably some it's probably a way of um implanting themselves into the subconscious of these young people and making them to be lifetime customers i really really understand that um but then um exactly. yeah Aside from the marketing aspect, so are you are you basically saying that most of them probably see it as just a marketing play for the long term, or you know, some of the others see other stuff, or maybe that's that's the what they mostly look at it as. So I'm, I'm these are the words of the let's say medium big companies. Uh, if if you want another use case that I see a lot. Um, let's take an example of that, like, like an NFT project. Let's take like mm -hmm. CryptoPunks, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, no, maybe CryptoPunk is, let's say Bored Apes, which is mm -hmm. something they've already done. Mm -hmm. So Bored Apes is looking to, to, to grow their community, to consolidate their community. Mm -hmm. And the metaverse could be a very, very good to, way to get an, a, a utility based on the NFTs. Mm -hmm. Just give you an example. We, you, you know, and, and like Bored Apes um, created uh, an experience in Sandbox, which is called, I think, Miami 20, 20, 2033, something like that. And then eventually, the only people that can join that experience and then see all the stages where people are speaking, interact with each other, play games, only if you own a certain Bored Ape. So the Bored Ape. You can start, as you can see, you can start adding utility. So you, if you want to join the experience for what's behind the experience, you have to own that certain NFT. So when you when you get into the into the um, into the map, the they scan your wallet. If you don't have it, you stay out. So that's one example. Mm -hmm. And then also for NFT projects, uh, you can start, uh, which is something also that we do. 
uh, you can start turning your 2D figures, your PFPs, into 3D avatars. So, uh -huh. again, you, you, you have an NFT, you have a board ape, and then when you, once you join a sandbox, let's say, or a spatial, you can play with your board ape. You have your 3D figure, you can play games, and, you know, we put, like, over 150 animations on, on avatars, so you can do a lot of stuff, and it's funny. <laughs> Wow, that's that. That sounds good. Like I could dance or something. <laughs> I could dance or something yeah. with yeah, yeah, with my board ape. <laughs> that sounds yeah, good. Exactly. That sounds good. Um. Okay. So my, I, I really love this, and um, that that makes a whole lot of sense. So I would say, you know, this all sounds good in theory, but then I would like to ask, you know, are some of these companies already achieving some of these goals? Do you, you know, from when some of these people started? From when you started to work with some of these people like three years or so ago, do you see some of them really tangibly saying that they are benefiting from this? So, um, like, I will start with an example. You know, we were in Paris this year and then we, we spoken with uh, the CMO of Samsung. Uh, I think he was appointed for, for uh, Samsung Metaverse. And then we asked him, like, what's your goal, you know, uh, for 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 Samsung being in the metaverse, you're doing so much. And I say, I was just told to teach kids that Samsung is top brand, is your brand, to make the, the, the future customers closer to Samsung. So eventually, when one day they're going to choose where are you, you know, to buy a Sony TV, uh, Baradia, you know, whatever, they're going to choose Samsung because they they feel like Samsung is the right choice because of all the moves that we did like 10, 15 years ago, you know, mm. or maybe less. So, for example, that goal is not something very uh, tangible, okay. You know, but they're investing for their future. So these are like some goals that, you know, if you're a, a company big enough, you can take the risks because you have the budget. And eventually this could turn into like an asymmetric a return, you know, and a few years from now, then um, others already achieved. Uh, for example, um, we've uh, worked with some brands to create a, a metaverse experiences close to the uh, to the launch of an NFT collection. Mm. So this increased a lot the uh, visibility that they had, and also you know the potential of the people that saw behind the project. You, you can literally. I think nowadays, which is also something that you can leverage the word metaverse to, you know, to make people dream. But <laughs> if you do the right things, you can actually, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can tell, you can tell it's the metaverse everywhere. But if you if you can really leverage the the, the technologies that we have right now, you can really add value to people. So, so yeah, some some didn't. Some are on track on goals, and then others, I think, they are just experimenting. You know, with Singuchi. Could you spend uh, like over 100k for a campaign for the Gucci bolts? Uh, but you know, they really were just testing, they have big budgets and they, they are fortunate enough to have big budgets because if something is good, you know, it's just it's just like a bet. Hmm, that sounds really, really good. And that sounds, you know, you, you say something really important, the fact that, you know, this is a long term play and, you know, it, it's usually the companies with huge budgets that can afford some long term plays. But then there are smaller companies that can, you know, see some immediate buzz or some immediate exposure due to being part of a metaverse. And that's a, that's really, really important. I find that fascinating. Um, Eduardo, um, so there's something else um, I'd like to bring up. You know, it's it's clear that these companies do see a, a lot of value here in the metaverse, and um, they are clearly seeing some results, or they are at least looking to see some results in the future. So, as a result of that, do you see many more companies going into the metaverse um, in the very near future? Like, do you think right now is like best time to build in the metaverse? What do you think? I think that first, yes, then you know. The metaverse is just starting to show some results, and you know, not that many companies are in yet. So definitely, I see. I think is is not even an alpha version if you want to like compare it to something like this. So definitely, you know, uh, I think that at this stage, 
um, certain, except it's not most of all, of the companies that know about metaverse are not in because they not understand it. They don't like kind of like understand the value behind what they can get, what they can achieve with it. Mm-hmm. And this is just, I think, two percent. The other ninety-eight percent is not doesn't know even like about the metaverse. They don't so know yeah, definitely, all. definitely a C. Yeah, they don't. They, they don't even know. Like, okay, maybe they heard it. They you know, yeah, they saw it like a newspaper or like on LinkedIn, but they don't really care about it because they, you know, they don't know what it is. Hmm. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think there is still. I don't know if you want to compare this like. 20, 2012, 2013 for Bitcoin, you know, it's something that eventually a few just heard about. Even a smaller group started doing something, but the bigger, 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 uh, and the larger groups are not even aware of it, you know. Um, and then, um, so what was the second question? Sorry. Yeah. Do you think right now is a great time to start building in the metaverse? this point in time so um i think that at least understanding what it is it makes makes you uh gets you an advantage on on the competition you know i'm not saying that you should start but at least you know you should you should comprehend what's what's really the metaverse what you can do with it how you can leverage it and then once you and like um, an understanding of everything you can do in the metaverse at the current stage and eventually you know in two years one year because the tech is moving so fast uh then you can start you know taking into consideration of doing something now rather than like when everybody else is really on the boat i think that's the kind of like, like approach i would take if i were a brand because you know throwing money into something that i don't understand doesn't make sense you know even if you know you're a big brand at least you you have to take on your side an expert that at least can teach you uh if that's something valuable for you or not so i think knowledge first and then implementation comes after Hmm. that's 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 very important you have to find out what actually works for you um because of course it's not it's not just you know one kind of metaverse that exists you know we've talked a lot about the consumer metaverses then, like you said, um, you know some of the the other companies that are very active are the, the kinds that are in the industrial or um, enterprise side of the metaverse, and they clearly see value. So you just have to be that company that finds where the value actually is, you know, for you. So um, the very last thing I would love to ask you is: um, is there one company's virtual space that has impressed you so far? Like, you know, across different metaverses, across different virtual worlds, whether it's on spatial or sandbox, is there any one company space or experience that actually impressed you? Um, so, um, I, you know, I don't want to take the, the, the side of a company rather than the other, you know, because <laughs> we've worked with so many, so I, I don't want to like, yeah, uh, try to have an imbalanced opinion uh because i think all of them are great but i will will give you that um one um one example of uh, that i've seen and that we did we helped making it uh reality um one example of leveraging the metaverse as you know something that i really 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 like to see more is to um get um get certain uh abilities to people that wouldn't be able to do certain things without mm. these uh, these platforms. Just mm. give you an example. Um, if you uh, if you're a football fan and you eventually you you know I, I'll tell you I'm I'm from Italy um, and I what city you know since um, Venice. Oh okay. Yeah, I, 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 I was born close to Venice and um, let's say you you truly love football um, and. You, you, you're not able to make it to a, a Champions League uh, final like, game because yeah. it can be the yeah, final. It can be both. Uh, I mean, final is a dream, but just just you know, let's say let's take a normal game. Uh, eventually, it's, or it can be to be expensive. 
or it's possible to you because maybe you're in Pakistan and you're so far from like, let's say, uh, Amsterdam or they make the final. Okay. Um, with tools like the metaverse, I mean, you cannot achieve at this stage this kind of like feeling that you're actually there, but you can start giving these people the ability to feel something more, you know, to recreate eventually a football stadium. Uh, give these people, maybe in five years, bouguars would be like, I don't know, like lipsticks, like really something that you usually take with you. So you give the ability to these people to experience certain things that you wouldn't be able to do normally, you know. And eventually, you know, nowadays out there, there are a lot of football fans that weren't, they wouldn't even be able to see once their favorite football club. And I think that football class in entering the metaverse is such a you know big deal for fans you can really really give again the ability to for these people to achieve certain emotions they wouldn't be able to do in their own life because they're not able to get there you know so mm -hmm. day by day um i i've seen I, I, I see some of these football clubs one of them we're working with to make certain activations to make certain immersive experience that as of now they might be you know so far from the end goal but, but i think we will get there and we're going to be able to let's say make everyone happy you know every fan out there be able to watch a football game or their favorite club hmm. that, that's that's that will be one serious immersive experience i was just thinking about it in my head using some sort of a vr headset like getting like probably like maybe pitch side and you watching everything and it's it'll be really really that, that'll be something I, I imagine like that's something that's in the works already maybe somebody's pitching that you know um somewhere yeah. but, but then that, that that sounds like an exciting future and I, i'm sure you know there are already some nice experiences out there um that um some people you... um Sorry. no yeah were you about to ask me if i've i've had like an experience <laughs> like that no 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 but, no, but but I, I just imagine, you know, like you said, that there's like in the very near future, there's there's going to be something like that. People could possibly watch, you know, a Champions League game or something, you know, and they, they could feel like they're pitch side, right by the pitch, right by the players, and it could be could yeah. be one hell of an experience, you know. So yeah, I, I think that's something that we could um aspire to in the next few years. Um so um, thank you so much, Eduardo. Um, I'm, I'm so grateful you did this. Um, I'm so glad um, you put a bit more context. You know, something that really struck me that you said, you know, was the fact that, of course, in this time when it appears there isn't so much investment into virtual worlds, into, into cryptocurrencies and into the three space in general, that there is lots of investment from companies looking to leverage the metaverse for different um for different goals and different um things they have in mind and that's that's really interesting and that shows that you know um there's always there's always a bit of value you know when whenever like you take the spotlights away and you know all that's left is you know real value real value that that's going to last and so i'm so i'm so grateful um for you taking the time to do this and to share your insights with us and when i say us i mean myself and all the other people who are going to watch this so um so is there any one last thing you would want to say? Do you have any last comments, perhaps about you, perhaps about the metaverse or your company? Yeah, uh, you, know, you know, maybe, well, first of all, thank you for the kind words. I mean, it's, as I said at the beginning, it's an honor for me to be here. I'm glad that you, you asked me to come. Um, so, yeah, eventually, like, one thing that uh, was one of the key elements that got me really thinking that this could be the future, and I truly believe that this would be the future. Um, you know, if you, if you look back the past years, you've seen like an enormous amount of like transformation on how we interact with things, mm -hmm. how we interact with, you know, first of all, it was newspaper, then it was to the website, and then the website mm -hmm. got even more JavaScript and stuff, even more complicated and more immersive, let's say, uh, where you can, you have effects and stuff like that. Then, you know, apps came out, and then now you know every brand almost have an app. Mm -hmm. you know, like <laughs> I don't know, I'm here close to the beach, so they have an app to take the spots. 
for, for <laughs> the beach. You know, it's crazy. You need to, if you if you, if I had to say this to my father like five years ago, I would say oh, you're crazy. A nap, you know, only you know, only Samsung earning like I don't know, Facebook is a nap. Why my beach should have a nap, and, and now everybody has as one. You know, yeah. it start being like a common thing. And I truly think that based on the advantages that you can achieve with immersive experiences, I think that everyone, as they did like 10 years ago, had a website. And now a website is like a no-brainer. Like, why shouldn't you have a website? I think that from now, like maybe in five years, but I can be wrong because the tech is, again, again, as, as I said, is moving so fast. Everybody would have immersive experiences to showcase something, to attract people, to make brand awareness, to, to make some communities together. But I think 3D in any form would be the future. Hmm. That, that sounds that sounds compelling. And I think I'm, I'm inclined to believe with believe that. And, you know, I'm inclined to believe that that's, that's exactly where we're going as a society. So thank you so much once again, Eduardo. And um, if you've been watching, um, I've been speaking with Eduardo Mazzetto. I love, I love, um, yeah, I really love um, this man and the energy he puts towards the metaverse. And we've been talking about, um, I'm talking about the state of the metaverse right now and building in these virtual spaces. And I look forward to seeing all of you in the very next episode of Money Panda. Until then, see y'all. Bye. <laughs>